There we go. Bye. Yes, there we go. Should be good now. Good evening, Dinora. How are you? Hello, teacher. Good evening. I'm fine. Very good. Very good. I'm happy okay. to see you again, Dinora. Thank you for coming. You're the first thank one you. to come to the class. Oh, <laughs> that's great. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you for coming. So, okay. what can you tell me about your day, Dinora? Uh, how are, what did you do today? Mm. Anything interesting that you would like to share? I'm very busy in my work, but I finish all the um, pendientes or tareas, mm -hmm. homework, no. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, I, I finished, I finished it at 5 p.m. And really? after the traffic is, is terrible. <laughs> but yes, I can imagine. Just when uh, we come back to my home. Okay, I see. I, uh, mm -hmm. So you've been very busy. You went to work today and uh, you finished work at five, right? Yes. Okay. So then uh, you said that you also completed all the pending homework that you had. You had some pending homework, right? But you completed all of that. Okay. Is that correct, Dinora? Yes. Okay. So... I complete the uh -huh. all um, tareas, homeworks. The homework? Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. Very good. So did you complete it yesterday? Um, yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, I finished uh, yesterday. You finished yesterday. Okay. Very good. Very good. I'm happy to hear that. Yeah. Because yesterday you. we took some time to do that. So I'm happy that you finished all of that. So very good. Very good, Inora. So in... You said also that there was a lot of traffic today, right? So where do you live, Dinora? Do you live in San Salvador? Or do you live, for example, in Lourdes or something like that? Dinora? Sorry, teacher. I um, see my baby. Oh, okay. That's okay. No problem. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank you for letting me know. All right, guys. Well, uh, thank you so much for coming, guys. Uh, thank you, Josue, Rodrigo. I'm happy to see you again. How are you doing today, guys? I hope you're doing fine. I hope you had a great day today. So for today, guys, we're going to continue with our uh, classes. We have a new topic that we need to work on today.
And basically, we just have three more classes left, like uh, just today, tomorrow, and then Thursday, right? So we are almost done, guys. Almost done. And Jacqueline, uh, she's on her way to home. Uh, sorry, she's on her way home. Uh, that's fine. Very good. Thank you for letting me know, Jack Jackie. <clears throat> Okay, guys, well, all right. So anything interesting, guys, that you would like to share? Uh, Josue, how are you doing today? Well, so yesterday, guys, we finished like the information that we had for the past perfect. We learned how to make sentences, affirmative sentences, also negative sentences and questions, right? We learned how to uh, uh, write that kind of sentences. And we also learned how to uh, make WH questions. Like, uh, for example, where had you learned English before? Or where had you studied English before, right? So we learned that kind of things, how to form sentences using the past perfect, right? So I think that we should be good with that part. I don't think that we need to go back and review that information again, because we already uh, started that topic for the last couple of days. So I think that we can just move on to the next part, right? We have a new topic for today. So I would like to present you guys with a new topic. So if you can hold on with me just for a moment, I will do that for you, okay? So please bear with me. All right, guys, so basically we just want to uh, review the information for section number five. I know you guys already completed all the activities, but we still need to uh, learn a couple of things. Hopefully we can have, we can learn uh, something and that's what we're gonna do today, right? So we have, uh, section number five, and then we have 5.0, lesson objective. It says, in this class, you will learn about different cultures around the world, okay? So that's basically uh, the main goal for this class, to learn something about different cultures and, and to be able uh, to describe different cultures around the world in English, right? Because that's what we want. We want to be able uh, to have more vocabulary, we want to be able to um, uh, write uh, a paragraph about uh, another culture. We want to be able to understand uh, how different cultures are and all that kind of things, right? So uh, let me just take a look here really quick. Let's see. Okay, please bear with me for a moment, guys. We have some activities for today, too. I want you guys to practice a little bit. So we have this um, video. This is about cross-cultural experiences. It says, watch the video about different cultures around the world and in the discussion forum, share similar experiences that you had with people from other countries that you have met, okay? So basically this is telling us that we need to watch the video first. And then we have the discussion forum, which is uh, here. And actually somebody posted uh, something here. Kevin Hernandez says, I work in a call center and I have had conversations with many different people. Uh, for example, the way American people celebrate Christmas they, uh, differs from how we do it in El Salvador. I remember one day I was talking to an old lady. She told me that Christmas holiday is to share with family and friends uh, in a cozy, cozy and beautiful place at home or even going to, to any church and worship God. But here in El Salvador, we spend nine playing with fireworks and playing music while some people get drunk. Uh, the contrast to El Salvador Christmas is Independence Day. In the US, they go to parks and have meals with beef and beer, okay? So Kevin uh, posted something here about uh, the difference between how people celebrate Christmas in the US and how people celebrate Christmas here uh, in El Salvador, for example. So 
that's good. We are going to talk about that kind of things uh, today, right? So we need to watch the video first, and then I will ask you guys some questions about it. And then uh, probably we can also talk about uh, your experience with uh, other cultures. And maybe you guys can provide me with some uh, examples of how uh, different cultures are, okay? So let's watch the video first. And then if you have any questions, you guys can let me know. Here we go. Let's go back, guys. Just want to make sure that I have this the audio turned on because sometimes I forget. Okay, there we go. Okay, here we go, guys. Let's uh, listen to the video first, okay? So let's pay attention. Hi, I'm Chris Brooks. Welcome to Travel World. Have you ever traveled to a country with a completely different culture? If you have, you probably know what culture shock is. It's a feeling of confusion you get from suddenly being in a new environment. The traditions and customs may seem strange. Expectations are different. You don't know exactly what you're supposed to do. You may even be a little bit afraid of making a mistake. All right, very good. So the first thing that he says is that if you have traveled to another country, uh, you probably know uh, the culture shock, right? So like, for example, when you go to another country, they have different customs. Uh, people do things in a different way. So let me ask you something, guys. Have you guys traveled to a different country? Because I, I haven't traveled to, an, uh, to a different country yet, but I have met people from other countries like for example i met people from mexico uh, i know people from germany uh, that kind of uh, countries right so they have different customs uh, they are a little bit different to us right like for example people from let's say europe or people from the the us they are sometimes more direct right they are more straightforward so if they want to tell you something, they will just go ahead and, and do it. Uh, unlike people from Latin America. Uh, like, for example, if we ask somebody from uh, El Salvador, like, where do you live? Uh, sometimes uh, they would tell you a lot of things before they can actually tell you uh, the answer that you're looking for. I don't know if that is something that you guys uh, have experienced in the past, but that's usually the way that it works. Eh, bueno, yo en mi caso he, he podido notar como esa diferencia que tenemos, guys. En nuestro caso, en muchas ocasiones, eh, en, la forma de comunicarnos, por ejemplo, es diferente. Digamos que acá en, en Latinoamérica, las personas eh, les hacen una pregunta y empiezan a contar toda la vida. ¿okay? Por ejemplo, le preguntan, eh, ¿le duele aquí? Eh, en la pierna, por ejemplo, eh, ¿le duele a usted la pierna? Y en lugar de decir sí o no, Empiezan a decir, uh, sí, pero lo que pasa es de que yo hace 10 años estaba eh, jugando y me caí. Y después lo que pasó fue esto, y después no sé qué. Y empiezan a contar un montón de historias. ¿okay? Eh, a diferencia de quizás en otras partes del mundo, donde si les hacen una pregunta son más directos, ¿verdad? Dicen sí o no, prácticamente pues eh, no andan contando tanta, tanta historia, ¿verdad? A diferencia de, de nosotros, que somos más... Eh, de esa forma, hablamos mucho más, quizás. No somos tan directos. So, I don't know about you guys. Uh, have you guys had the opportunity to meet somebody from another country? Or have you had the opportunity to travel uh, to another country? Hello, good afternoon. Uh, good night or good evening. Uh, yeah, I had the opportunity to travel to uh, another country before. Okay, very good. Arlene, in, in what country did you travel to? And uh, can you tell us your experience? Was it different? Were the people different there? Um, yeah, when I went to Europe, I know. Um, um, I don't know, the culture is uh, different uh, than the El Salvador. Mm -hmm. 
because, um, for example, they have, I saw a lot of family like smoking with their child mm -hmm. and it was really normal uh, that all the family share the cigarettes <laughs> and, and that was much, is the most shocking that I saw mm -hmm. at that time. And for, yeah, but the people is not, so nice, like here in, in Latin America or in El Salvador, that you can speak with with an strange and in... an stranger, right? They they are not too friendly, right? That's that's what you mean. They they, they are not they are friendly. They are not. They are not uh, even even in their um I don't know Spanish people is is, is the correct way. Mm -hmm. Even even with mm -hmm. the Spanish people, they they are not friendly mm, i see well that's very interesting very very interesting so uh they didn't talk to you or uh you i mean yeah we we, we speak we spoke with another people from latin america that mm -hmm. were uh, lost or something and we tried to help to use the metro or something like that mm -hmm. but for uh, um spanish people it was uh, a few that uh, outside Madrid, they, uh, okay. A lot of, we met some people that they were from another like state from Spain. Mm -hmm. So they were lost in Madrid too. So we made friends <laughs> because they were lost, but in, in, in the other case, no, we, we couldn't make some friends. <laughs> oh, I see. That's the reason why uh, they, were friends with you because uh they were lost too they yes. were trying <laughs> yes. they're trying to get directions so you you helped them out yes i see <laughs> okay very interesting arlene so yeah i think that that's uh exactly what i mean so it, that's why people when other people from uh abroad from other countries come to el salvador they usually say things like that uh, they say uh, people from el salvador are really nice they are really friendly. They are really easygoing because we are just like that. I mean, uh, you can probably meet somebody on the street and then you can start talking to that person. Uh, probably you can uh, become friends, uh, become friend with that person, but that is not the case in Europe or in other countries, right? Yes, I think people from Latin America is more common make friends uh, in the street because I went to Peru um, and yeah, we made friends from Argentina, uh, people from Peru and different and we we were in, in a place and we met a lot of people from different countries and it was different because all, all the people uh, we make friends or we were sharing experience about our countries and everything. I think in Latin America is the people is more is it going is it going. I don't know mm -hmm. what they say. Is it going? Is... Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you on that, Arlene. Thank you. Yes, that's exactly what I was trying to say. That people from Latin America are more easy going. We are more friendly. Like like just like you said, probably people from Europe. They are not so open. I mean, if you get close, uh, you you come to them, probably they they would they they will not like uh, talk to you uh, like right away because they don't know you and they are not so friendly. But that's just the way that it works. They are kind of different when it comes. They are kind of different when it comes to that. They have different customs, and we are more friendly. I think that that's just a culture a cultural thing, right? So very interesting. What about the rest, guys? Have you guys traveled to another country? Because let me tell you that I just traveled. <laughs> well, I don't know if that counts because I, I mean, I just went to the border between El Salvador and Honduras. So I, I kind of went to the other side of the border and I met like a couple of people, uh, a couple of people from uh, Honduras. And they are a little bit different to us. Not really that much. But they have, I know, I felt that there was something different. I felt like they, they are not exactly like we are, right? I, I don't know if you, 
uh, you understand what I'm trying to say, but uh, it's a little bit different, right? You can feel that you have, uh, like they behave in a different way. Like they probably have different expressions that they use. And sometimes the accent, as, accent? The accent too. Yes, they have a different accent. <laughs> that is correct. So as that happens a lot with people from Guatemala too. They have a different accent than us. So when you talk to somebody from Guatemala, uh, they they have some words that they use. And then sometimes we even have like a communication uh, problems, right? Because they, they say things differently. So that's something that can happen too. Bueno, vamos a seguir entonces viendo el video que se trata precisamente acerca de esto. Se trata de como diferencias culturales y de el choque cultural que podemos tener al momento de viajar a otro país y ese tipo de cosas. Así que ya vamos a hablar un poco más. Eh, muchas gracias, Arlene, por participar. Y vamos a participar los demás también, ¿ok? Creo que ya vemos un poco más ya, porque estábamos poquitos al inicio, pero vamos a seguir. In time, you get used to everything. But when you get home, you often have some interesting and perhaps humorous stories to tell about your cross-cultural experiences. Today, we're going to Latin America to meet some people who've traveled abroad and hear about their experiences crossing cultures. First, let's go to Brazil. Ah, yes, Rio de Janeiro. Enjoying a spectacular view of Sugarloaf Mountain is our lucky reporter, Fatima Nolan. Hi, Chris. I'm here in beautiful Rio de Janeiro. Like everywhere else in the world, people here like to travel abroad and have some interesting stories to tell. Let's talk with some of them. What's your name and where are you from? My name is Camilla and I was born in Stockholm, Sweden, but I moved to Rio when I was four and I've lived here ever since. And two years ago, I went to Sweden and I lived there for a year. What did you notice that was different? Well, the first thing that I noticed when I got to Sweden was how people greet each other. It was completely different because here in Brazil we kiss on the cheek and they shake hands. So I went to kiss like, and they, oh my goodness, what's going on? And they felt like you're invading my space or something like that, it was strange. <laughs> Right, guys, so let's listen to it one more time because I, want, I would like to ask you some questions about this. And uh, I would like to ask you uh, exactly what she says, okay? So let's just listen to it one more time, right? So let's go back. Brazil. Ah, yes, Rio de Janeiro. Enjoying a spectacular view of Sugarloaf Mountain is our lucky reporter, Fatima Nolan. Hi, Chris. I'm here in beautiful Rio de Janeiro. Like everywhere else in the world, people here like to travel abroad and have some interesting stories to tell. Let's talk with some of them. What's your name and where are you from? My name is Camilla. And I was born in Stockholm, Sweden, but I moved to Rio when I was four. And I've lived here ever since. And two years ago, I went to Sweden and I lived there for a year. What did you notice that was different? Well, the first thing that I noticed when I got to Sweden was how people greet each other. It was completely different because here in Brazil, we kiss on the cheek and they shake hands. So I went to kiss like, and they, oh my goodness, what's going on? And they felt like you're invading my space or something like that. It was strange. <laughs> right, guys, so what did she say? What did you guys identify from uh, the interview with her? What did she say? So she says that she's from Scotland, right? Is that correct? Uh, Sweden. Hello, good night. Good night, Karen. I'm sorry. Okay, it's okay. You can go ahead, Karen. You want to say something? Uh, yes. She said that he, he, she born 
in um, Scotland, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. But she moved uh, to Brazil. And Very she good. went to visit student. And, um, and uh, she said that it was like different, the greeting mm -hmm. in Sweden. Well, and of good. course, and I think that European people is like cold people. Right. And here in America, we are just, just more friendly, right? Exactly, so yeah. they, she said that they just shake their hands. And in Brazil, they usually ask here, um, they give a kiss in the cheek. Mm, very good. Very good, Karen. And then uh, do you remember how old was she when she moved to Brazil? Four uh, years. I think she said four. She was four when she moved. Very good. Very, very good. Arlene, thank you. Both of you. That is correct. So she said that she was four when she moved to Brazil. Very good. Very good. All right. Very good, guys. That's just a, just a one more thing that I wanted to share with you. Like sometimes we can say that, like I'm 25 years old, or you can say, for example, I'm 24 or 25, and that's fine, okay? Uh, if somebody asks, uh, or you can tell somebody, for example, uh, I just, just give an example. You can say, uh, so I have a daughter and she's 12, for example. Uh, instead of saying uh, she's 20, uh, 12 years old, you can say she's 12, just like that. And that would be fine too, okay? So uh, let's continue, guys. Let's continue. Very good job, guys. Very good. This is Fatima Nolan from Rio de Janeiro. Back to you, Chris. Thanks, Fatima. Now, let's cross the South American continent to Lima, Peru, where our reporter Denise Oregui is standing by. Denise? Thanks, Chris. We're here at the beautiful Plaza de Armas. This is a favorite spot for tourists and the people of Lima. Let's talk to some people here about their cross-cultural experiences. Hey, what's your name and where are you from? My name's Andrew and I'm from the United States. Have you noticed any difference in the way people do things here in Peru? Yeah, one thing that I've really noticed is the public transportation system is really different. Because here, the bus system is private, and so there's all these people trying to get you on their bus because the way they make money is by getting as many people as possible to get on their bus. So the whole time, they're yelling, get on my bus, get on my bus, and sometimes it's not the bus that you want to be getting on. This is Denise Arregui here in Lima, Peru. Back to you, Chris. Uh, so this one was funny, right? <laughs> it's like probably like every transportation in El Salvador, right? <laughs> well. I think that now is not that common because um, it's just the driver, right? Mm -hmm. They don't have the people who take the money like before. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a little bit different, but yes, it was funny. <laughs> yes, thank you, Karen. Yeah, so you're right. Now it's not as it used to be because like you said, there, are, there aren't as many uh, people, uh, that, that kind of people that, uh, took the money in the past that there are not as many of them as they used to be but there are still some of them right but what i mean is that still uh, they want to get as many people on the bus as they can right like for example uh they they will tell you in the morning like uh you can get on the bus because uh, there is still a space for you they they will tell you something like that even if the uh the bus is completely uh, full of people. They will still ask you to get on their, on their bus. So <laughs> that's something that happens. All right, so vamos a ver. ¿Qué piensan de esto? Vamos a ver. Dinora, por ejemplo. O Kevin. So, Dinora, Kevin. Jacqueline, ¿ya está en casa o todavía no? Vamos a ver. Dinora, ahí está ya. Teacher, um, oh. sorry, I see my baby. <laughs> Oh, I see. It's okay. Thank you. No problem. I understand, you know. No problem. But I listening about the report is uh, the difference in the culture about the transportation. Very good. Okay. So what is the difference with the transportation in, let's say, in Peru, uh, regard, in regards to the USA? What did they say? 
the four uh, of face mm, the bus or no uh, basically they said that uh, the transportation system is private so they try to get as many people on the bus as they can okay can you uh, repeat that for me uh, sorry, I understand. Uh -huh. So they uh, they have a private transportation system. So they try okay. to get as many people on the bus as they can. Okay. So what kind of transportation do, do, do they have, Dinora? Uh, I, uh, in my case. No, no. I mean in Peru. What kind of transportation ah. do they have? They. Um, a bus. Right, they have buses, right. They have private transportation, right? Okay. Okay, uh, do you understand that part? Are we good? Um, a little. A little bit, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can, we can listen to it one more time, Dinora. Let's listen to it again, okay? Okay. Here we go. Thank you. So, aquí vamos otra vez. This is Fatima Nolan from Rio de Janeiro. Back to you, Chris. Thanks, Fatima. Now, let's cross the South American continent to Lima, Peru, where our reporter Denise Oregui is standing by. Denise? Thanks, Chris. We're here at the beautiful Plaza de Armas. This is a favorite spot for tourists and the people of Lima. Let's talk to some people here about their cross-cultural experiences. What's your name and where are you from? My name's Andrew and I'm from the United States. Have you noticed any difference in the way people do things here in Peru? Yeah, one thing that I've really noticed is the public transportation system is really different. Because here the bus system is private and so there's all these people trying to get you on their bus because the way they make money is by getting as many people as possible to get on their bus. So the whole time they're yelling, get on my bus, get on my bus, and sometimes it's not the bus that you want to be getting on. This is the new... <laughs> That part is really funny, guys. I don't know about you, but that part makes me laugh. Get on my bus, get on my bus. <laughs> Teacher, o sea que solo se sube. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically, that's what uh, what happens is that uh, it is just like here in El Salvador that there is somebody uh, on the bus that is trying to get you on the bus. So, for example, uh, they would just stop for a moment and they uh, tell you, get on my bus so you can do that they, they try to convince you uh, to get on the bus okay so básicamente dinora lo que pasa es que es como acá en el salvador verdad digamos okay. va el bus por la calle va alguien ahí como el cobrador como dijo karen va como el cobrador el que toma el dinero y este le, el, el cobrador le dice súbase 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 el bus y así entonces eso es lo que dice en el video get on my bus get on my bus uh, that's what people say Okay, <laughs> like, like this in El Salvador. Like in El Salvador, that is correct. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. Just like in El Salvador, they tell you, get on the bus, get on the bus. Because that's the way that they make money by getting as many people on the bus as they can. Okay, creo que ahora nos queda un poco más claro, ¿verdad, Dinora? Yes, teacher. Awesome, okay, very good. Let's continue. Nisa Regi here in Lima, Peru. Back to you, Chris. Thank you, Denise. Now reporter Hillary Garcia is standing by in Mexico, our final destination for today. What do you have for us, Hillary? Thanks, Chris. I'm here in beautiful Tepoztlan, Mexico, a town that both Mexican and foreign tourists like to visit. Let's talk with a few of them about their cross-cultural experiences. What's your name and where are you from? My name is Delfino Valdez and I was born in Reynosa, Mexico and now I live in the United States. Tell us about your cross-cultural experience. I am married to an American woman and she was making me lunch one day and she brought me a soup and a sandwich. 
Once I was done with it, I said, okay, honey, where's the rest of it? And she said, that was it. Well, it is customary in my culture to have a huge meal in the middle of the day with the beans, the rice, the meat. So needless to say, I was very surprised. This is Hillary Garcia in Tepoztlan, Mexico. Back to you, Chris. All right, guys, let's listen to it one more time, okay? Until next time. Oh, sorry. Just a second, guys. Okay, there we go. A little bit more. Our final destination for today. What do you have for us, Hillary? Thanks, Chris. I'm here in beautiful Tepoztlan, Mexico, a town that both Mexican and foreign tourists like to visit. Let's talk with a few of them about their cross-cultural experiences. Hi, what's your name and where are you from? My name is Delfino Valdez, and I was born in Reynosa, Mexico, and now I live in the United States. Tell us about your cross-cultural experience. I am married to an American woman, and she was making me lunch one day, and she brought me a soup and a sandwich. Once I was done with it, I said, okay, honey, where's the rest of it? And she said, that was it. Well, it is customary in my culture to have a huge meal in the middle of the day with the beans, the rice, the meat. So needless to say, I was very surprised. This is Hillary Garcia in Tepoztlan, Mexico. <laughs> All right, guys, very good. So what can you tell me about this one right here? Well, I think that is not just the meal, but in um, Latin America, all um, meals are, are like complete because even in the morning, some people just um, take as a breakfast, a continental breakfast that is just a piece of bread. And in the lunch is the same. We just have meat, we have bean, uh, we have rice, mm -hmm. we have tortillas. Mm -hmm. Also, of course, in a salad and, mm -hmm. of course, a, a drink. And um, he was explaining that uh, um, his American wife, mm -hmm. uh, for a meal, he just prepared a soup and a sandwich for him. And he was waiting to have more food, of mm -hmm. course, <laughs> as Latin American people, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, that is correct, <laughs> Karen. <laughs> That is correct, yes. Uh, usually we tend to eat more food, like not only on, at lunch, but also at breakfast. Usually you said we have a lot of things like, uh, I mean, eggs and beans and plantain and cheese, bread, bread mm -hmm. a lot of things, right? So yeah. that's something that happens. And uh, she just prepared just um, a soup and what else? A sandwich, did you say? A sandwich, you a sandwich yeah. right? So, um, I mean, that's not the way that it works for us. Mm -hmm. And then probably that's the cultural shock that we have because we have different customs when it comes to, to food, right? So I, I imagine that people probably that live in the U.S., they have that cultural shock too, right? They go there, they go to the U.S., and then they don't have pupusas. They don't have all the kind of things that we eat here. So then uh, that can be a little uh, challenging at first, right? But I think it's not old in North American because um, in the United States, there is a huge, a huge a amount of people that is um, trying to weight loss, uh, weight, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to lose weight. To lose weight. Um, because, yeah. To lose and, weight, to lose weight. Lose weight, yes. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I'm not sure for me, it was like weird because I'm thinking that North American, uh, people tend to eat a lot of fried food. Mm -hmm. They, they love fried food, Fast food. anytime. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's true. That is true, Karen. So that's the reason why they, uh, nowadays they have like more nutritionist, they have mm -hmm. more they're trying to work on that, on having a healthy diet, because just like you said, um, I mean, and I think that that's understandable at some point because probably they, they want to uh, work all day. So that could be the reason why they just uh, grab some fast food because that's something that you can take on the go. Like you are going on your way to work 
Then you just buy a burger. You can buy uh, something that is fast that you don't have to prepare. So probably that's the reason why they do that. Yes, and it's cheaper. As, it's cheap. as I know, it's cheaper than it is. healthy food. Than healthy foods, yes. If you mm -hmm. want to buy a salad, for example, here, a salad is more expensive than just yeah. a regular meal. I mean, it can uh, a salad. It sometimes it is like six dollars or seven dollars, and if you want to buy just a regular meal, uh, you only have to spend like three or uh, I mean three dollars on average. Yeah. So, or mm -hmm. if you want to get a a hamburger, there are yeah, hamburger that cost two dollars two and fifty. That's true. Mm -hmm. And they give you a drink. They give you a lot of things more. Yes. So, <laughs> yeah. Right. No se con los combos. Yeah. Con los combos, cabal. Con tres pesitos ya se compra uno, verdad? Todo. Le dan ahí este yeah. la hamburguesa, trae la soda, las papas, todo trae. En cambio sí. con tres dólares no me dan una ensalada. Mm. So that's really sad, guys, but healthy food is really expensive. So that's... That's not... why it's better uh, cook. Yep. You, you have to cook the healthy, the health with healthy, with vegetables or everything. I think it's, it's cheaper than buy food and the street and health. It's, it's healthy. It's healthier, it's yes. Healthier and it's better because you prevent sickness or illness. Disease. Illness. Illness. Or I don't know what is the correct word, illness or sickness. I think that you probably may want to say something like illnesses or uh, getting a virus or something like that, probably. Yeah, or diabetics or, or you prevent um, another uh, different uh, illness. Mm -hmm. That is correct, Arlene. Yes, I agree with you totally. Because that's what I like to do. It's like when I have the opportunity, I just prefer to cook my own food because, um, I, I mean, people on the street, they, they are, I mean, but you don't know exactly if they watch their hands, if they watch the, the food, you, you don't know that. So you can catch a virus or something like that. You can get sick. So I think that it's better just to uh, cook your own food, your own yes. meal. That's better. It's better, it's healthier, and it's cheaper. <laughs> it's cheaper too. Yeah, totally. I absolutely. I agree with that. That is correct. So very good, guys. I think that we uh, have a good understanding about this and how the cultural chalk works. <laughs> Sorry, guys. So uh, I don't know if anybody wants to participate and maybe want to share something. I know that at first we were just a few, uh, like five or something like that at the beginning. So I don't know if anybody else wants to uh, share their experiences. Uh, have you guys traveled? Uh, Arlene was telling us that she traveled to Europe. She also traveled to Peru, I think. And she was telling us uh, her experience with other people in other countries. So I don't know about the rest. Have you guys had the opportunity to travel to another country, and if that is the case, if, uh, how was it? What was your experience in a different country? Did you like it? Were people friendly? Well, you... um, I'm sorry. Uh -huh. sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> um, in my case, uh, only I was traveled to Guatemala. So you traveled to Guatemala, okay. Uh, Yes, but mm, no more different, only in accent, Just but that. they, yes, but they speak quickly. Yes, yes. <laughs> I know uh -huh. what you mean. Uh -huh. But uh, uh, the culture, I think, is the same like that. Almost the same. Yes. Very good, very good. Thank you so much, Dinora. Yes, so mm -hmm. probably they almost have the same kind of customs that we have. The only thing that I heard once is that they sometimes eat like meat uh, in breakfast, like beef 
making breakfast, which is something that we don't do really uh, like all the time. So I, I don't know about that, if that's true or not. Pero una vez escuché por ahí, no sé si era correcto o qué, si era una mentira nada más, que dicen de que las personas en Guatemala como que comen para el desayuno, se comen a veces como carne o cosas así. Entonces, no sé qué tan cierto sea, pero creo que nosotros no lo hacemos tanto, ¿verdad? Nosotros por lo general comemos carne, es como que al mediodía o en la cena. Pero no tanto por la mañana. Por la mañana tenemos esa costumbre que comemos más que todo frijoles, eh, acompañado de huevos, queso, ese tipo de cosas, plátano. Así que no lo sé. No sé si Nora me puede confirmar eso cuando estuve en, en, en Guatemala. Ah, uh, no, teacher. Um, we we went for oh, one day. Just one day. And oh. yes, and we mm, don't no. You we didn't stay. was ah uh, yes. That breakfast we was mm, on the way. Lo sea, lo hicimos en el camino, no es cuando íbamos allá. Uh -huh. Oh, I see. So you yeah. had breakfast on your way to Guatemala. You didn't yeah. have breakfast in Guatemala, right? Uh, yeah. I see. Okay, I understand, Inora. Very good. Okay. I see. So you didn't have the opportunity to have breakfast in Guatemala because you only stayed for one day. Uh, oops, yes. Okay, very good. Thank you so much, Inora. I appreciate that. Very good. Muy bien, muy bien. Sí, eh, bueno, acá en Centroamérica casi no tenemos diferencias, quizás. Tal vez ya si nos vamos un poco más lejos, ahí tal vez. Eh, tal that, vez... that is true, teacher. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can confirm because my mother eh, went to Guatemala and stayed for around one month. Mm -hmm. And she said that, yes, they eat meat um, in the morning. And she was asking just eh, to eat <laughs> beans and eggs but they they just eat like um our lunch mm -hmm. yeah yes <laughs> here in El Salvador so yeah it is true even I, I went to Guatemala once mm -hmm. and Pollo Campero it was open really early and uh, a lot of people it ah. was yes eating Pollo Campero even us uh, even <laughs> us yes for uh, for breakfast we eat Campero and, and French fries. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that's, really, that's really weird because here in our country, uh, let's say that if you want to eat pollo campero, if you want to eat like some kind of fast food, uh, basically they don't sell fast food at restaurants mm -hmm. in the morning. Yeah. They just have like the breakfast menu and they tell you that if you want to uh, eat, for example, pollo campero, Then you have to wait until uh, 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. Mm -hmm. so you can have, hours. yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's really interesting how they have pollo campero like for breakfast. That's that's yeah. crazy. <laughs> And it was delicious. I think it was <laughs> one of the best breakfast that I ever ate. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, very good, Karen. It's different than Argentina because I had the opportunity to travel there twice. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they said, um, and they offer you a continental breakfast, mm -hmm. it's really a continental breakfast. So it's just a piece of bread, tea or coffee, mm -hmm. and uh, milk. And, um, and that's it. <laughs> jelly, yeah, and butter. And that's Holy. it. Okay. <laughs> Well, that's not for people that like to eat a lot of food, like me. No, no. no I just, I just ate a lot of piece of bread. <laughs> well, that's yeah. too much carbohydrates, Karen. <laughs> I know, I know. You can watch your diet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Very good. Thank you so much, Karen. I appreciate that. Well, bien, bien interesante, verdad? Entonces, Karen nos confirma que sí, en Guatemala. si sí comen carne por la mañana. Su mamá estuvo por ahí en unos meses. Eh, ella quería comer como nosotros acá, solamente frijoles y eso, pero le estaban ofreciendo pollo campero, ¿ok? <ríe> Básicamente. Y Karen, de hecho, comió pollo campero para el desayuno, lo cual es bien interesante. Acá nosotros podemos comer pollo campero solamente si lo guardamos del día anterior para el desayuno. 
De lo contrario, pues como le estaba diciendo, ellos abren como a las 10, a las 11. En ese momento es cuando empiezan a servir el pollo, ¿verdad? Así que, bien interesante. Y luego, pues también lo del desayuno en Argentina. Eh, creo que si no sabemos, eh, si no estamos acostumbrados, va, va a ser como un poco raro que solamente nos den un pan con un café. <ríe> Aunque hay gente que come así aquí, ¿verdad? Pero es como un, un pan dulce o algo con café. Así que quizás eh, he comido desayuno continental y ni me, me había dado cuenta. Eh, un día de esos que no tenía comida. Eh, un pancito y un café, nada más. Y ya está. So, that's, that's good. <laughs> okay, so I'm sorry about that. So, uh, well, I think that that concludes this part uh, of the cultural cross. And then we have this uh, next lesson, which is 5.2. We have the objective here. It says, in this class, you will learn how to use noun phrases containing relative clauses. Right, so we are going to move on. We have this video about relative clauses and noun phrases. Okay, so if you guys can remember, we have uh, two types of clauses. We have independent clauses. We have uh, dependent clauses or relative clauses because they depend on something else, right? They don't have sense just by themselves. They need more information so they can have complete sense. So in this case, we are going to learn a couple of things about that. In this case, uh, noun phrases. When we say noun phrases, we are talking about, like in this case, one thing, something, two people. Basically, we have a subject that is uh, made of uh, two words, or at least one word, all right? Like in this case, two people, that is a noun phrase. This is working as a subject, but we have two different words. So that's the reason why we call them noun phrases, because they are made of other words, okay? So let me just present you, uh, probably we will, we will just have the introduction to this, and probably we will finish the topic tomorrow, okay? So I will just play the video for you so we can uh, have an introduction to this topic, okay? Hi, everyone. By the end of this class, you'll be able to express your feelings towards traveling to other countries. You'll learn how to use noun phrases to do this. So let's get started by me asking you a few questions which you should be able to answer with no problems at all by the end of this class. When traveling to another country, would you be nervous about being far away from your family? Would you feel insecure about traveling alone? Would you be enthusiastic about making new friends? By the end of this class, you'll be able to use noun phrases which contain relative clauses in order to express your ideas when it comes to traveling. So let me present some structure at this particular moment. What we're going to try to do is we're going to try to make sense of these noun phrases which contain relative clauses. Uh, first, we'll start talking a little bit about how we use this as a subject. Uh, then we'll move into the object, probably the object, I'll separate this into a different lecture. So uh, in order to form this kind of um, expressions, first we're going to have a subject. So in this case, this subject becomes one thing. Uh, then this is followed by a relative clause, I really miss. And then we're going to have the uh, verb to be. Uh, in this case, as you can see, is the verb to be is. And then that's followed by um, an object or a phrase, if you will. So let's write that specific sentence down, and then we're going to try to make sense of it, as I mentioned. So let me do that at this point. Okay. All right. So as I mentioned, uh, one thing, sorry, one thing becomes the subject of the sentence. I've I've colored that in green so we can uh, see the difference between what's a verb and what's a what's a uh, what's a subject, what's a relative clause, what's a verb, and what's the object of this particular idea. Then this is followed by the relative clause. I, I colored this in blue so you can see what, what I'm referring to as a relative clause. And then the verb to be. Now the verb to be needs to match with the subject, if you will. So if the subject uh, were to be plural, then this should change to are. Um, and then it's followed by the object of the sentence. So in this case, my mom's cooking is the object of the sentence. 
what we're going to do right now is we're going to include a lot of uh, relative losses uh, so that you can see that uh, this topic could it can become a little bit confusing but if we understand uh, this structure it, it shouldn't be difficult to complete so let me include um, lots of relative clauses, all right? Ok, guys. Bueno, entonces vamos a ver la explicación acerca de esto. So, like I mentioned before, we have these uh, noun phrases, like one thing, that is a noun phrase. And then we have the relative clauses, right? Which is something that doesn't make sense by itself. We need to add more information to it so it can make sense, right? So in this case, what is the structure for this? We have the subject, then we have the relative class, then the verb to be, and this is something that needs to match the subject, okay? And then we have the object of the sentence. Uh, we said before that the object of the sentence is basically what is being affected by the action, okay? So in this case, we have one thing that is the subject, I'd really miss relative clause, and then verb to be is, this is something that matches the subject, right? We're talking about one thing. So we need to use the verb to be for the third person, right? In this case, is. One thing I'd really miss is, and then the object, my mom's cooking. So that translates to Spanish like, una cosa que eh, extrañaría, en verdad, es, eh, la cocina, o cómo cocina mi mamá, cómo, hace, cómo prepara la comida de ella, ok entonces básicamente acá tenemos esta parte esta este noun phrase, es el sujeto pues tenemos la cláusula relativa que es esta parte de acá lo que yo extrañaría ok, uh, y luego el verbo to be es, una cosa es estamos hablando de, de una cosa, ok, por eso utilizamos is, si fueran two things then uh, we would say something like Two things I'd really miss are my mom's cooking and something else, right? But in this case, it's just one thing. Entonces, por eso utilizamos is. My mom's cooking. Okay? Eh, ¿Cómo cocina mi mamá? Ese es el objeto que está siendo afectado por el verbo de la oración, que es, en este caso, extrañar, okay? ¿Qué es, qué es lo que yo extrañaría? Yo extrañaría cómo cocina mi mamá. Entonces, así es como funciona esta parte. Esta es la estructura que vamos a utilizar. Si se fijan, las otras oraciones van a tener esa misma estructura. Como que something, subject, I'd be nervous about. Then the verb to be is making new friends. That's the object. Making new friends. That's the object of the sentence. So that's it. Basically, that's uh, very easy. Uh, that is when it comes to Uh, in this case, relative clauses as a we have as a subject and then we have as an object. But we are going to continue with this topic tomorrow. Okay, we need to finish uh, these uh, like two or three topics that we have left, and then we are done, right? And then we finish. So, guys, um, really want to thank you for coming today. Really, really want to thank you. Uh, I know that we already finished with all the activities that we, that we had. So I really want to thank you for being here uh, because that's uh, that means a lot for me. And I know that you guys are making a, a huge effort to be here. So I appreciate that. And I will see you tomorrow, guys. I uh, hope you guys have a great evening. Thank you. You're Bye. welcome. Bye, guys. Bye.